Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever was originally going to open with Chadwick Boseman T'Challa undusting after the blip just to find his wife with another man. Nakia, you let him catch you? Hey, this is according to director Ryan Coogler and co-writer Joe Robert Cole to your New York Times, who confirmed that before Chadwick Boseman passed away, their much speculated about 2020 draft of the Black Panther 2 script focused largely on T'Challa and Toussaint, aka T'Challa Jr. as a father and son plot after T'Challa returned from a forced five year absence. Remember back in November, I actually conducted an investigation into various interviews before and after the movie released and concluded based on statements from Kugler that his original script must have focused on the theme of fathers forcibly separated from their families and returning after those absences. And so yeah, it's pretty validating to hear Kugler confirm this and offer so much transparency into his writing process, which is a really brave move that not all creatives who work on these titles are willing to do. So in this video, I am gonna break down the alternate opening scene to Black Panther 2, the full plot line for this movie that they had to let go of and how this would have affected not just the sequel but the MCU beyond it. So on December 23rd, Ryan Coogler and Joe Robert Cole finally opened up to the New York Times about their original plan for Black Panther 2. Coogler said, and I'm going to read the whole quote here because every bit of it is fascinating, it was, what are we going to do about the blip? That was the challenge. It was absolutely nothing like what we made. It was going to be a father-son story from the perspective of a father because the first movie had been a father-son story from the perspective of the sons. In the script, T'Challa was a dad who had had this forced five-year absence from his son's life. The first scene was an animated sequence. You hear Nakia talking to Toussaint. She says, tell me what you know about your father. You realize that he doesn't know his dad was the Black Panther. He's never met him. And Nakia is remarried to a Haitian dude. Then we cut to reality and it's the night that everybody comes back from the blip. You see T'Challa meet the kid for the first time. Then it cuts ahead three years and he's essentially co-parenting. We had some crazy scenes in there for Chad, man. Our code name for the movie was Summer Break. And the movie was about a summer that the kid spends with his dad. For his eighth birthday, they do a ritual where they go out into the bush and have to live off the land. But something happens and T'Challa has to go to save the world with this son on his hip. That was the movie. Wow, so much to unpack there. Now what Coogler and Cole eventually settled on for the rewrites opening scene of Shuri in the lab, praying to Bost, trying to save her brother was incredible. So nothing against that at all. But this just proves that these two wrote two amazing opening sequences for this movie. Some of my favorite scenes in Marvel Phase 4 have been what I call blip fiction. The little vignettes showing each character at the time of the blip as it ended, which ranged from tragic with Monica Rambeau and WandaVision to disorienting with Yelena Belova and Hawkeye to comedic with that tuba player in Spider-Man Far From Home. <laughs> but this removed Black Panther 2 intro sounds like it would have been the best of these. The night everyone returns from the blip? Literally, the moments before, during, and immediately after T'Challa joined the Avengers in the Battle of Earth in Endgame, including after T'Challa took a knee to mourn Tony Stark in that Endgame deleted scene that I consider canon because why not, but presumably before T'Challa attended Tony's funeral back on his farm. Ryan Coogler didn't specify if T'Challa would have met Toussaint before Wong met up with him to open a portal to the rubble of Avengers compound. Remember Doctor Strange assigned Wong to gather everyone? Is that everyone? What do you want it more? or if T'Challa could have met up with Nakia and Toussaint afterwards, after the dust settled from the battle. I'm gonna guess it was after the battle, but there wouldn't have been that much time between Hulk snapping everyone back and those returners portaling into the battle. And think about it, if Nakia had resettled in Haiti, T'Challa would have needed quite a bit of time to go track her down. Now I'm on camera a lot, so I have to see my face a lot. So you'd think I would have to put a lot of effort in my skincare routine, but you know what? I really don't because I use Geology. Geology is a 15 time award-winning personalized skincare company recognized in Hypebeast, Birdie, Men's Health, and Esquire and Aspen Grooming Awards with over 6,000 five-star reviews. And they've recently expanded to offer products for pretty much whatever you need. All you gotta do is take this 30-second diagnostic quiz and Geology is gonna figure out your routine for you. Like if you need some hair care, well, use Geology's Co-Wash. It's a specially formulated cream cleanser that removes buildup and cleanses the hair without the big lather or the harsh ingredients of typical shampoo. And for the rest of your shower routine, you can use their body washes. They're free of harsh ingredients, they smell great, and are refillable. And for after the shower, protect your skin from environmental stressors with vitamin C plus E Ferulic Serum to keep your skin looking young and healthy, and then a bit of dermatologist-tested aluminum-free deodorant that really smells great. Right now, for a limited time, Geologist is hooking our audience up with an absolutely crazy offer. If you use the code NEWROCKSTARS, they will give you an additional additional 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. That discount applies whether you're stocking up for yourself or stuffing someone else's stocking instead. Either way, Geology has you covered. Check out their awesome gift sets featuring all of your favorite Geology products. To get started, just click the link in the description, take a 30-second diagnostic quiz, and their team of dermatologists will design a personalized routine just for you that ships directly to your door. But actually, this scene would have come after this animated opening that Coogler described, which I'm guessing was referring to the beautiful grains of sand sequence that opened the 2018 film. Remember, in that movie, it was to 
Chaka's brother Njobu telling a bedtime story to young Injidaka, Killmonger, about the origins of Wakanda. This sequel would have paralleled that, but with a heartbreaking reveal that T'Challa's son does not really know that much about him, at least doesn't know the truth of his heroics or his sacrifices. This is a theme that Ryan Coogler has been so good at exploring as a filmmaker. With movies like Creed and Fruitvale Station, what happens when fathers are taken away from their sons? What happens to the fathers? And more importantly, what happens to the sons? Coogler, when asked by the Times about Namor as the villain, confirms that Namor was always in the movie, but that the original plan was for it to be a three-way conflict between Wakanda, the United States, and Talokan. But, quote, it was all mostly from the child's perspective. It's also interesting to hear about this summer break scenario, where Toussaint spends part of the year in Haiti, but a summer in Wakanda, and going through this rite of passage, having to go into the bush to live off the land. Sounds like a mix of Spartan youth training, but something unique to Wakanda, something T'Challa must have done with his father. We're actually reminded of T'Challa around that same age, shown in the opening of What If Episode 2. Had T'Chaka taken T'Challa on that survival trip yet? Is that why T'Challa took off on his own, went outside the border of Wakanda, and in this What If Hypothetical got abducted by Yondu? These kinds of traditions and rituals of Wakanda is something that I wish we had more of in the theatrical version of Wakanda Forever. Like the funeral sequence is obviously super meaningful and beautifully shot, but it was kind of hard to focus on anything other than having to say goodbye to T'Challa. I just would have loved what the Boy Scout looked like. Also, in this original opening, T'Challa would have been emblematic of the social disruption caused by people suddenly returning from the blip. Blip fiction! And yep, my mind goes to this Haitian dude that Coogler mentioned. Yikes! To be a stepdad competing with the Black Panther? I mean, I was gonna fan cast MT in this role, but I wouldn't want to ask our guy to shit himself. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on this alternate opening scene in the comments below. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVOSS, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.